Good morning, everyone. I know you weren't quite expecting to see me in this manner rather than in Clown Church today. That's because I'm having to self-isolate. I'm absolutely fine, but I've been asked to self-isolate, so that's why I'm not actually at church this morning. So um, Reverend Adrian Murray Leslie is taking the service as, as I speak at Clown. Um, and of course, you'll have all seen the announcement from the Prime Minister yesterday about the new lockdown from this Thursday. Um, he didn't actually mention places of worship in his in his announcement, but I've since discovered, looking on the government guidance on the website, um, that what it means for churches is that ostensibly our churches will be closed from the 5th of November to the 2nd of December. We will only open to take funeral services, otherwise we will be closed for public services. So that means we'll have a return to using um, our online services in this manner. So although I had to self-isolate today, this was an opportunity to test out doing our services live from my study, because in the last lockdown, I pre-recorded all of our services, um, which did take a lot of work um, and a lot of time up. And now I've got to grips a bit more with the technology. Um, I thought it would be a, a good opportunity to see if we can have our services live um, on a Sunday instead. Um, to save me a bit of time and also to, to make it a little bit more engaging for you as well rather than watching something that was recorded earlier in the week. So hopefully that will work. So, um, so welcome uh, this morning. I think it feels different this time, doesn't it? This lockdown, it's hard. Uh, we're all exhausted. We're all fed up with not being able to plan things and not being able to do things. And I mentioned last week in my sermon on Bible Sunday about the value of the book of Psalms and how 70% of the Psalms, and there's 150 of them, so it's a lot, 70% of the Psalms are what we call Psalms of lament. They are hymns saying to God, why is this happening? And a friend of mine um, who is a priest called Jane, she's written a lament. And I think it's important to draw on that tradition from our faith of lament it's okay to say to God why is this happening it's okay to feel sad and and fed up about the situation that we're in and a lot of the Psalms express that and what Jane's done in this prayer that she's written is she's drawn on that tradition of the Psalms um, so some of the phraseology that she's used in this prayer is directly from the Psalms and it's quite a direct way of praying to God um, but I'm going to read this prayer of lament before we begin our service because I think we need we each need to actually say out loud that this isn't fun, this isn't good, and we need God to be with us. So let us pray. Save us, O God. Deliver us from our enemy and its many miseries. It is an unseen terror like we've never known, and its devastation seems unstoppable. This deadly foe is without mercy. It lurks in silence and murders the innocent. It wreaks havoc upon the weak. It annihilates the poor. Not one person is truly safe from it. It has us all in its grasp. In you, we seek refuge. We cry out to you and ask that you hear our prayer. Hear the sound of our weeping and be our shield. In the absence of relief, people say, where is your God? And so we ask too, how long must we all suffer? How long? Do not hide your face from us, O Lord. We need you now more than ever. Remind us that we have not been forgotten, for you are our rescuing strength. You are our promise that the weak shall be strengthened, mm -hmm. the poor shall not perish, the mentally exhausted and frail shall not be overcome. We will not give in to our frustrations. We will not succumb to anger and bitterness. We will find solace in each other and take care of the vulnerable. We will calm one another's fears and be gentle with one another. And we shall all find comfort in you, our Lord. In our distress, we cry out to you, in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Today is All Saints Day and so I'm going to play the hymn that I was miss I was lamenting the fact actually that we couldn't belt this hymn out in church today together. Um, so you can belt it out at home and In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Rejoice, people of God. Praise the Lord. Let us keep the feast in honour of all God's saints, in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we can do a bit of singing um, when you're watching at home. 
So if you would like to repeat after me, joining in with the words in yellow. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. So let us pray the collect for All Saints Day. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we come to hear our readings from scripture. So the first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is taken from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will we, be, we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I went off to the University of Leeds at the tender age of 18, my mum confessed to me that when she was cleaning the house, she would pick up my photo as she dusted it and kiss it. Although it was just a photo, it represented much more than that. And in her little act of kissing the photo, she brought me back into the room with her. This is the feeling you get a little bit when you go into an Orthodox or Coptic church. On almost every surface, you will see images of the saints, what are known as icons. And you will often see um, a devoted person kissing such icons. An orthodox icon is no ordinary painting. They are designed to be like a window into the spiritual world, connecting us with God. Today is All Saints Day and I want us to think a little bit about the communion of saints. We declare we believe in it in the creed every week. But how much do you really think about the communion of saints? Orthodox Christians speak a lot more about the communion of saints than we do. The icons that decorate their places of worship are a physical reminder of the communion of saints. Just like our living spaces are hung with photos of friends and family, weddings and graduations, moments of great celebration in our lives that we surround ourselves with to help us to know who we are, Orthodox churches do the same with the saints. They surround themselves with images of the faithful to remind themselves of who they are, remind themselves of moments of great celebration to give themselves hope. The writer to the Hebrews describes the saints as a great cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded most especially by the communion of saints during a Eucharist. Not only do we say the words together in solidarity with Christians all around the world, but in unison with that great banquet in heaven. The Eucharist is an echo of that great banquet of heaven to which we are all invited with the saints. A little like my mum's photo of me 
it was just a photo, and yet it was more than that. Her holding it and kissing it brought her a little closer to me. As we share the bread at the Eucharist, we bring God close to us. We bring heaven to earth. The Sanctus and Benedictus in the middle of the Eucharistic prayer demonstrates this dance between heaven and earth. First, we say the words of the saints and angels in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And then we reply with the words from earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Heaven touches earth and earth touches heaven in the Eucharist. The communion of saints surrounds us as we pray. They are like heavenly spectators cheering us on in the great race of life. But the communion of saints is not only present with us in the Eucharist but all through our lives. There is great diversity in the communion of saints. If you think of the photos you have on display around your home, they bring comfort, encouragement and joy. Reminders of what is important in your life. I'd like to encourage us, and I'm including myself here, to consider how we are decorating our own spiritual home. Whose pictures do you have hanging there? Which saints are on the walls of your home? Now I'm sure many of you can guess who I have on my wall. It's St Hilde of Whitby. But since coming to these parishes here, I've included St John the Baptist and St James. I've got to know them. I've got to know about their lives, the way they followed Jesus. I heard a sermon this week that encouraged us to see the saints as our friends, as our soul companions. Because there is such diversity in the communion of saints, there are literally hundreds to choose from, you can be sure that you'll find someone you'll click with. What the bishop preaching the sermon said though, was that it is worth finding a saint that you don't necessarily feel drawn to as well. As befriending someone so different from you can really fill you out spiritually as a person. Just as in the church we are not all alike, the communion of saints is the same. The church is not a club for like-minded people. If you look around a church and everyone dresses the same, votes the same way and has the same outlook on life, then you are not in the church. This is the rich tapestry of the communion of saints which God is continuously growing and adding to, adding more photos on his walls. So whose pictures will you have on your wall? St Mary Magdalene perhaps, or St Edith Stein, or St Francis of Assisi, the first eco-warrior, or maybe the African theologian, St Augustine, or St Mother Teresa, or St Oscar Romero, the Latin American bishop who was martyred at the altar, who stood up for the rights of the poor. All of us are cherishing our photos of loved ones at the moment, especially while we're out, we are apart. So let us do the same spiritually and cherish the saints. Hang their photos on the walls of our hearts. Look at them as we walk around the house. Be reminded of their great words of wisdom, their deeds of love, their closeness to God. All of the saints are in heaven, which is a reminder to each one of us that it is our turn. They had their turn on earth, with the church militant as we call it, the church on earth, and now they are a part of the church triumphant. They have gone before us, and now it is our turn to become saints, to live our lives as they did, dedicated to Christ. They have already overcome the battle of life on earth and are raised with Christ where there is no more pain or crying, where God will wipe every tear 
from our eyes. And so they cheer us on to follow in their footsteps. I don't know about you, but I want to be there in that number when the saints go marching in. And so we declare our faith not only in solidarity with Christians all around the world, but also the saints echo these words with us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so for our prayers today, the response to Father by your spirit is bring in your kingdom. So let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your spirit. Rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. We pray for all nations of the world grappling with the pandemic. We pray for wisdom for our own government as more infections begin to spread. We pray for all working on the front line and for all those working on a vaccine for COVID-19. We also pray for the upcoming election in the United States. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. We pray especially by name for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Meller, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Richard Abbas, John Tuckwood, Ethel Hadfield, Madge Bunting, Peter Widdison and Margaret Malpass. And in a moment's quiet, we bring before God our own friends and family who are struggling at this time. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. 
send us to those who mourn to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. We pray for the recently departed and for those who mourn their loss. Remembering Edith Miller, Audrey Florence Wilkinson and Neville Sturman. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of the communion of saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just going to move my chair. So you can see me a bit better. I can stand back. So some lovely words from Paul's letter to the Colossians. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of virtual peace. Feel free to um, write peace be with you under the comments um, or share it of course with the people in your household and I will just prepare this small altar that I have here. To you we come father of lights with angels and saints where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth gathering into one in your kingdom, a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Baptist, St James and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The body of Christ broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. You may like to hold your palms open to God as we pray this prayer together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And so we pray together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. 
keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so would you bow your heads to receive God's blessing. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who has transformed those we remember today, raise and strengthen you, that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And so maybe I should say stay in peace rather than go in peace. But I hope you found today's service of comfort. Those words from Revelation, I think, were particularly poignant where we hear those words that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. So with that in mind, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Uh, it's been a little bit different, um, but basically for the whole month of November, our worship will be online in this manner. Next Sunday, the service will be at 10.15 and is likely to be a similar service to this. Uh, it won't be a Eucharist, but it will be a remembrance service with the, with the usual elements that we have at the remembrance service, but it will just purely be me online. Um, but do mark the day in your own way, in your own home. And then we'll see you very soon. So take care, God bless, and we'll see you soon.